everyone, this is Dr. Mo, and in this video I'm going to talk through how to get a moving camera to follow your player on a big map. So this is going to be great for people working on platformers or RPGs or really anything where you have a map that is larger than your game window. Here's an example before we start talking about code of what this is going to look like when it's done. So I've got my little player here. And I don't have gravity working yet on him. It's just basically regular old keyboard movement. But you can see we have this cool background that I just downloaded from the internet. And it's scrolling nicely um, when I move along it. So that's what we're shooting for. So step one is to get that background in the right folder. Um, make sure you ask me questions if you forgot where it should go. And then you do need to open it up in Paint or some other software that will tell you the size of it. You can see here this one that I have is 2064 by 387. You're going to be needing to put those numbers in your code. All right, I'm only going to talk about the new stuff, the stuff that has to do with the camera, but please feel free if you've forgotten any of this stuff, like if you can't remember what enumeration is or whatever, feel free to give me an email or a shout out and we can certainly go over those basics again, no problemo. Um, make sure that you do have all your image stuff set up. Um, you will need to create an Allegro variable to hold that background. And then later on you're going to need to load it in there. Um, I've created some new variables here, world width and world height. Here are some variables here that set the camera's position, and that's always going to be zero, 0, because you always want the camera to be in the top left corner and to fill up your whole screen. All right, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, here, you're loading the background. Don't forget to load the background image. Um, I had forgotten. <laughs> this this check here is because I had forgotten to run this fancy schmancy um, function to let those images work. Make sure you also go into Properties in Allegro and set up... <clears throat> set it up so you can actually see, or I'm sorry, run the image functions there too. Um, that's not super new though. Um, oh, here's a big mistake that I made. So with the original code here that we used in second semester to bound the player so he or she doesn't walk off the screen, you need to change this instead of screen height and world height, you need to change this to, um, sorry, screen height and screen width. You need to change it to world height and world width. The reason for that, and it took me a while to figure out what my problem was, is that you'll be stuck to the screen's width and you won't be able to traverse the entire map. I mean, go ahead and try that. It's kind of a cool mistake to make and helps you understand stuff. I'm glad I made that mistake. But um, you definitely want to later change that to world height and world width. Okay. Um, this is this is commented out because um, we don't really have any objects that we're interacting yet with yet, but later on when you actually have stuff like this question box there and um, these pipes and things like that, when you have stuff to interact with, you're going to need to shift those coordinates to deal with collision and other things. Like right now they're just drawn on the map, so they're not really objects to interact with. But when you have collision and stuff, you're going to need to shift um, the coordinates based on where the camera is in order to get collision working. And we'll talk about that more later. Um, here's where the camera is actually following the player. Um, notice that it's always, the player is pretty much going to be in the center of the screen. I've commented out the why for this particular one, but depending on how you've designed your game, you might not want to do that. Um, I've made this look a little bit more like a Mario side-scroller, and in a Mario side-scroller, the, the, the camera doesn't go up and down with Mario. But if you're doing something more of a Metroid, Metroidvania, Castlevania, Kid Icarus style, where you can go upwards, you definitely do want to have the camera follow you at some point. You can also switch back and forth on what it follows based on what game state you're in. Here we're setting up the um, boundary of the camera. Um, if you notice here when we get to the edge here, notice how the camera's not really moving at all. And it's not until we cross that midpoint of the screen that it starts to move and then Similarly, that when we get to the very end of it, 
it stops moving again as well. Um, that's because of these boundaries that we've set up here. Um, as soon as the camera x becomes less than zero, we set it equal to zero, and as soon as etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so very similar to what we do with player boundaries. Um, nothing new there. And then the only real new thing in the render section is you, of course, have to draw the bitmap, the, the map, the, um, the background image. Make sure you're using bitmap region. I tried to do this with just AL draw bitmap at first, and of course that didn't work. Um, you can see the uh, variables that are fed into this function, the parameters here, um, are pretty simple and straightforward. And then you do need to alter, you do need to alter um, where the player is being drawn. You need to subtract that camera X from him. If you take this off, again, definitely play around with this stuff and, and see what the different things do. You see how it just, like, he, he, ah, he just basically, like, goes off the, he goes off the, and I don't, maybe that's something you want to do in your game. If that's, if that's some functionality that you like, go for it, but that's, if you're really going for a traditional Mario, um, you're going to want to adjust it so he doesn't fly off the screen like that. Okay, so best of luck getting your camera window working, um, and happy coding!